Welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and this video is a continuation of the series that I have going on how to inspect a hive. Uh, I've got a long video of an hour long video. Uh, it's about an hour long but it talks in depth on uh, what, to, what to look for, what to smell for, uh, all the diseases and all the pests that you're going to encounter uh, when you're in beekeeping. This video is, is geared to the new beekeeper or somebody is thinking about becoming a beekeeper, it shows you what you can typically find in the apiary because every trip to the apiary is different from the previous because the bees will be drawing comb or doing some stuff or you may have to react to um, something that, that you're just not expecting they're not doing right in there, disease or pest or getting improperly drawn comb. Uh, so again, this will show you uh, that process and what to look for. Uh, a new beekeeper is typically going to take about 30 to 45 minutes to inspect a hive. An experienced beekeeper will typically take about five to ten minutes uh, and then a commercial beekeeper will typically take less than five minutes. Most commercial beekeepers do it in about two or three minutes and will be able to tell you exactly what they saw in there. Uh, this video is probably going to be somewhere between uh, an experienced beekeeper and a new beekeeper simply because I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing as I'm going through it so it's going to take a little bit more time. So prior to uh, going into an your hive you want to make sure that you have everything set up so in this case I have my smoker already lit and is burning quite nicely um, and then I have a full hive body so I like it as opposed to a frame perch um, although I occasionally do use frame perches. these frame perches typically only hold three to five frames whereas a full hive body holds the entire um, number of frames and what you can do is you can actually just swap out the box as you go through the inspections and then I like to have another high body ready to go uh, with all the frames and foundation and then all the, if you watch my other videos uh, I always talk about having the frames marked on one end with a line to help me uh, keep the brood oriented properly so that I'm not confusing the bees. Uh, in this case because this is a package bees that I installed for a video um, about three weeks ago I also have a pollen patty should I need it. I'll probably end up putting it on there. I've got a LED flashlight um, to uh, help spot eggs because I'm in the shadows right now. Um, I also have one and a half power reading glasses. I'm an old guy. Uh, so one and a half power reading glasses really help me spot the eggs. And then I've got some mineral oil and a spare beetle blaster trap should I need to. I do not have mineral oil in, in this yet because I don't anticipate having to replace it yet. Uh, the only time I would replace it is if they've drawn out all the comb and uh, when you have two frames left on there that haven't drawn out comb that's the time to add new uh, a new box to it. Um, so with that being said I'll go ahead and put my reading glasses on and get suited up. Um, today's temperature is 70 degrees in North Carolina, it's sunny. Um, whenever I inspect the hive, I never uh, pull out frames unless it's 64 degrees or higher and not raining. So I'll, again, I'll go, I'll get suited up, and I'll show you what that process looks like now. All right, so now that I'm suited up, um, what I like to do is I like to come around, and actually you should, uh, if you ever go through the certified beekeeper test, you'll have to know this process. So I'm gonna come around to the front of the entrance. I'm gonna lightly smoke it. If I had an emery shim up on top, it, a, it basically fills a gap, uh, it creates a gap. I would also smoke it, in this case I don't. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, in this case I've got a full red brick that I use for marking if I've seen the queen or eggs. I'm going to simply remove my hop top. Uh, if you didn't have a high top feeder on it, you would then smoke it, just so, uh, you'd crack this open and then smoke it. In this case, I have a um, Miller high top feeder on there. I like to look underneath this hive top just to see that's typically where um, wax moths like to hang out. And then I've got a ventilated inner cover. Um, again, this allows the you to pour syrup through this. It also creates some ventilation up on top. Uh, in this case, because I'm using a combination of a uh, Miller high top feeder, it allows me to put it right on top. 
and then pour syrup through this because honeybees are great flyers. They are horrible swimmers. So what that allows me to do is it keeps them from drowning inside this. Inside the Miller hot top feeder has got a, a ladder and a screen that the bees crawl up and get access to the syrup from inside the hive, uh, but they can't get into the syrup chamber. But if you didn't have this ventilated inner cover on it, the bees could fly out and then fly in there to try to get to the syrup and they could drown. So again, um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in here and see how much syrup they have. In this case, I see about an inch of syrup. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, hive tool. I'm going to crack this open a little bit, and then I'm going to smoke just inside that crack a little bit. And what that's doing, the purpose of smoke is to mask the honeybees' pheromones. Um, and then I'm just going to set this smoker to the side in case I should need it. I probably won't. You notice when I put my hive top down, I put it at an angle so that when I put my component parts on it, I can put them at an angle. Because I've got an inch of syrup in here, I'm probably not going to check underneath here, depending on how heavy it is and how cumbersome. Um, I don't always look in the, underneath here. In this case, it's kind of uh, unwieldy, so I'm not going to lift it up. So I'm going to put it at an angle here. You just have to realize that the queen could be there, but it's rare that she is. Um, and then I like to look in here see... Uh, in this case, I've got a pollen patty because I've got my own uh, homemade hive body. I do not need an emery shim. If you have a commercial made hive body, a lot of times they make these uh, frame rests or these rabbits um, very shallow. So the frames are almost uh, up to the top of this. So if I had a pollen patty in here, which I do, I would have to... Um, put an emery shim. In this case it's one of my own so I made it extra deep. I'm going to pull this pollen patty off and you can see it's quite messy where they're trying to get to the pollen. Um, it's heated up. In this case actually I've got a fresh pollen patty. I'm just going to toss this. I'm going to set it outside where anybody in the community can get it. I'll just replace that with a fresh pollen patty if I don't see a good amount of pollen in there. Alright so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to clean up my rest of this uh, pollen patty. I just noticed it was kind of messy. Again, I'm just going to put it out here where they can get access to it. Um, small hive beetles, you have to be careful with small hive beetles, especially if you've got a weak colony, because small hive beetles also love pollen patties. Um, so now I'm going to lift up, gently lift up on this beetle blaster beetle trap, because it should be half full of mineral oil. I'm going to take a quick gander in it just to see if they've trapped any small hive beetles in it. In this case, I haven't. They haven't. Um, so... I'm just going to lean it up against my brick. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take a quick gander, see where the most of the brood is. In this case, it's on these center frames. I'm going to slide this frame off to the side, this outside frame, and then I'm going to lift straight up on it. If you had a 10 frame box uh, that's a little bit more uh, tight in there, you'd probably have to use your, your J hook. Or your L-shaped hive tool and lift it up instead of this with the A-frames you have a lot more space in there so that's why I like to push all my frames off to the side so I got that gap right off the bat some beekeepers like to uh, center the frames I personally don't do that so I take a quick gander at this I see that they're starting to draw a comb out that's the other reason I'm feeding them sugar uh, even though we got a nectar flow going on uh, if you see improperly drawn comb I can see the beginnings of an improperly drawn comb um, it's not too bad yet we'll see if they correct that but if I did, I would scrape that. If you noticed on all my other videos, if you've watched my other videos, I've got a line drawn across one end. Again, that helps me keep the frames oriented because uh, you don't want to mess them up. It confuses them if you start moving the brood around. Excuse me, girls. My girls are polite. They like to hear please and thank you. Excuse me. Uh, I'm just joking, of course. Um, all right, so I lift this frame up. This is a donated uh, honey frame I gave to them. It was my frame. I see... Uh, wet um, honey means they haven't capped it yet and haven't fully dehydrated it to below 18.6%. Uh, um, I see drones, I see bee bread. Bee bread is pollen that has been mixed with nectar or honey uh, and it causes it to ferment and it's something they feed to each other. I also see uh, fresh pollen being put in there so this is a good thing. So either they're getting to my dry pollen feeder that I have out in my apiary or they are finding natural pollen, which is plenty abundant right now because we've got uh, clover that's in, in bloom and we have holly that's being bloomed, which is our great nectar sources. And then we've got uh, a lot of good pollen plants uh, 
We've got the maples that are starting to come in bloom here, and those are great pollen sources for the honeybees. Um, I pull this frame up. Um, this one I've seen they're drawing out comb, but I'm, what I'm seeing is they the frame the cells that they have drawn out. Um, it, they are packed full of eggs. Um, this year I'm just playing around with this um, plastic foundation uh, a little bit. I usually use, I like to use natural foundation, um, natural beeswax. This year I'm just playing around with it. Um, the bees don't do not get if you get plastic foundation do not get all pla black plastic because sometimes they'll reject it right off the bat uh, and then they'll just abscond and you've lost all your money. All right, so. Here I see some improperly drawn comb. I'll draw. Uh, I'll put, remember put a uh, picture in it. But basically, what they're doing is they're drawing. They're making uh, tunnels when they draw out the comb. So you want to be careful. You look underneath there. Make sure the queen's not underneath there. And then I'm just going to simply remove this and then pull this wax off and set it to the side and um, force them to draw out the comb properly. And if you inadvertently tear up good cells, they'll repair them. It's not a big deal. Makes them a little mad when I do this, but that's okay. Draw it out right, girls, and I won't mess with you. Uh, again, I see fresh uh, pollen being put in this one. I see larvae of all ages. <coughs> Smoke's getting into me, uh, into my lungs. Whew. All right, so again, excuse me, girls. Again, put your hive tool in there and just kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit gently, and they'll get the hint and they'll move out of your way. You can also blow on them. You could also use a smoker, but I don't like to use a lot of smoke. I know a lot of beekeepers do. I just don't, um, unless they're being really defensive. So as I'm looking, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a really good brood pattern, brood of all ages. So I, what I'm doing is I'm scanning 360 around the edges of the frame and then um, going in concentric circles as I go towards center uh, looking for the queen. But now that I've seen the eggs, I'm not too worried about finding the queen because I know that if... I accidentally kill her somehow um, that they can take one of those young larvae uh, one of those young larvae up to three day old larvae um, when the egg falls over and closes into a larvae they can make an emergency queen so I'm not as worried about it here um, I'm also looking for all the diseases and pests that I talked about in that other video again I don't see the queen but again I'm not that concerned and truth be told I I mostly don't see the queen um, I don't worry about finding her. Again, once I see eggs, I'm okay with that because she's been there within three days and I know that they can make a uh, emergency queen. And here I've got improperly drawn comb again. Um, and this is the second, this will be the second time that they've done this one. They're just making tunnels. Um, it's not too bad, so I'm just going to leave it in this case. Um, at some point, I, if I got too wild out about it, I'd remove it, but it's a big mass. In this case, I'm because I've already removed it once, and I can see on both sides of the combs, so I'm not going to worry about that particular one. But if I couldn't see through there, then I would simply remove it. Um, again, it's a judgment call whether you remove it or not. Um, again, I don't see anything. Um, again, my lines, my index lines, can tell me where the. Um, orientation of the frame is. Alright, so again, this one I do have some improperly drawn comb. Again, and this one I actually am going to move it because it's not that bad yet. Um, so I'm just going to remove it out of the way. Anytime I remove improperly drawn comb, I just simply, um, and they're starting to draw it up on top, excuse me girls. They've got improperly drawn comb up here. So I'm just going to scrape that off before they get it into a tunnel. And I don't see any eggs being put on this one. Again, they're drawing out the frame foundation. And again, that's why I'm feeding them sugar syrup as much as they'll take um, until they get dry, fresh drawn out comb. Here's another plastic frame. Um, it's plastic with beeswax on it. Um, and they haven't started anything significant. They started a couple cells, but nothing significant yet. And then this last frame should be nothing but honey. Um, Occasionally the queen will lay on it and she'll be on it. Pull it up. I'm seeing uh, freshly uh, made honey, um, a wet honey. I see some bee bread. I don't see any brood. Flip it around. I got the sun over my shoulder so I can look into the cells. And again, if I had to, I'll show you the trick where 
if you needed to, you could use the light. And this is just a honey cell, but the concept's the same. I just take it, have a positive control on one end, and I just rest the other frame on the on the high body, preferably on top of the frame so it doesn't have a chance of falling off the edge. And then I just simply take my uh, one and a half power reading glasses and the LED flashlight and I look down in the cells and it will help you spot the eggs. Uh, that's my favorite trick to finding eggs. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about getting the perfect sunlight. Alright, so now that I, I'm just going to put this frame straight back in. I'm just going to slide it to one side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a gander at the sides here. Um, now the disadvantage to my technique of drawing or pulling all the frames to one side is I can get excuse me girls um, I don't know if you can see it from over there uh, I'll try to pull it a little closer we'll see if it shows up well on the camera if not I'll cut it out uh, but if you look in here they've drawn burr comb on this side wall so I don't know if you can see that in there that's all this bulk uh, burr comb so it's all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply scrape that it's one of the disadvantages to um, an 8 frame because it has a lot more space. And if you didn't do this, uh, if you had honey on the outside, um, you could rupture that honey, the honey cells as you uh, pull that frame out. So again, I just let them do it knowing it's there and I just scrape it out. I'm going to take this wax and I'll save it so you can use it for making candles or if you had a foundation press. You could uh, make them fresh founders, foundation. And I like to go all the way to the bottom. Um, a lot of times small high bills will hang out on the bottom. I'm seeing plenty of pollen on the girls as the ones that are hanging here. They're wondering where their home went to. Again, I look underneath just to see if I see small high beetles. And then I t I'll take this entrance reducer out. I got an entrance reducer on it because it's a new high body. Uh, excuse me, I started off as package bees. And then what I like to do is I look, like to look where the vertical portion of the bottom board meets the horizontal portion. And I'm looking for small high bills or small high bill larvae. Um, look, looks like that comb fell through where I cleaned it off. Um, so I'm going to again, I'm going to remove that. All right, so again, I like to look. And if you ever see honeybees chasing something um, or scurrying fast, you'll see them uh, chasing a small high bill. In this case, I actually see one. So there's one right here. I'm just going to take my hive tool and then draw through it and smash it. The small hive beetles can uh, ruin um, honey. What they're going through is they're going through the, the um, hive and they're looking for the honey. And they'll also eat, according to my state apiary inspector, which I never knew, they will also uh, eat eggs. Um, so another reason I like to get rid of them. And then I take eight, when I get this residue as I'm cleaning, you scrape the bees off and they hit the ground. Not a big deal. The bees haven't learned to fly yet. We'll crawl back up. The girls that have learned to fly will um, fly back up. And then again, as you get this wax and debris, I like to smash through it just in case I miss one of the small high beetle larvae. Um, in this case, the girls are doing fine. All right, so now I'm going to put everything back together. So this hive's doing well. Um, again, I just installed it from Package Bees about three weeks ago, so I'm seeing plenty of progress. I like this slatted rack. I have them on all my hives. <coughs> slatted rack creates, uh, allows the um, temperatures to stay cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter because it creates dead space, under, dead air space underneath it. Um, the other thing it does, it uh, creates a little shadow toward the front here with this horizontal box, uh, horizontal plate, um, and it allows that queen, encourages the queen to lay closer to the bottom of the bottom frames. Um, and then there is a right way and a wrong way to put this back on. It has a deeper side and then a shallower side. And then it has this horizontal wood piece up front. So it goes shallow side up and the wood across front. So I'm going to put this on there, just gently move it forward. And then I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And what that does, if I have a bee trapped underneath it, it'll, they'll feel that pressure on them and then they'll move out of the way. All right, so now... Um, because I would put use a the beauty of having a another full hive body is I can simply pick this thing up and move it over. If you have an old back, then you can simply place the original one back in uh, and then move a few frames at a time. Uh, if you're doing honey or if you're doing brood, um, 
just move a frame over at a time. In this case, I'm not that bad yet, so I just pick up the whole thing. So again, I put the front down first. I go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, just gently. A lot of the bees get out of the way, and then I square everything up. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make sure my frames are all pushed over. They are. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mineral oil trap on one side. Excuse me, girls. Try not to smash the girls. All right. So when, you, when you smash a bee, you actually cause her to release her um, venom for, from her poison sac her venom sac um, and that releases the alarm pheromones so in this case I'm going to put a brand new pollen patty in here because it is a young colony and I don't see as much pollen as I would like to so I can either squirt or what I like to do as of late uh, so it's not as messy as I'll just simply peel part of this uh, this top layer of the um, wax paper off and then I'm going to put it on top, excuse me girl, and then you want to put it near the um, brood, the uncapped brood, the eggs that you saw, because that's um, in the open cells so that uh, they can feed their queen and they can also use it to feed the young larvae. It's nice and handy, obviously not cover up the um, mineral oil trap. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and because my um, high tops, I make them three quarter inch rabbits, I do not need an emery shimp. On the commercial made high bodies, I would ha then have to add an emery shim. Uh, again, it's just nothing more than a three quarter spacer with a hole in it. Uh, to, if I didn't do that, um, I wouldn't be able to put the next high body on, or component part, in this case the miller feeder, on top because it would come in contact with this uh, quarter inch thick um, pollen patty or eighth inch thick. I can't. I don't know what the thickness is, but it's thick enough to where you, it wouldn't allow another hive component on top of it. In this case, because of the way I make my hive bodies with that three quarter inch rabbit, it's deep enough that I can put this on there and the bees can get access to it. Again, up, down, up, down. And then next thing I'm going to do is because I had already anticipated feeding them, they're not taking down, they're not taking down as much syrup. And the reason I like to give them plenty of syrup is it takes uh, six to eight pounds of honey to make one pound of beeswax. So when I pour this through, I'm going to have to pay attention. I'm going to take my reading glasses off inside my veil so I can see what I'm doing. i got to be careful not to cause the syrup to overflow into the hive because that syrup hits overflows can kill the brood uh, or some bees. The most time they'll go ahead and clean the bees up, but if it goes in uh, and hits the brood, it could actually cause them to drown. Uh, so I'm going to be careful as I'm pouring this through that it doesn't get up too high. They already had about an inch when I started off, so I'm just watching the height and make sure it doesn't go up over the ladder. And that's about as far as I want to go with this. All right. Um, so again, on the Miller high top feeder, there's a screen here and there's a screen ladder if they get access to it from inside the hive. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that any bees underneath there is like this one. I'm going to flick her off. Um, because now that I've got this ventilated inner cover in here, um, there's a chance she could be trapped. Um, all right, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a full-size red brick on here. And the reason I do that, that's my marking system whenever I've seen the eggs or uh, the queen itself, uh, herself. Um, and then if I saw queen cells, when you're looking on the frames, you look on the margins, uh, on the sides and the bottom for swarm cells. You look on the face of the frame for uh, super seeder cells. In this case, it's a, a brand new colony, so uh, likelihood of a, of a super seeder are slim. It's possible that they can reject the queen that they have, um, but it's it's rare that once they get them started um, that they've generally accepted. Usually they're going to kill her right off the bat. Um, but anyhow, if I saw a swarm cell, um, I would simply put a half red brick on top of here to let me know to keep pay attention to this. Um, that's all there is to this video. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.